Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Manik Madan. I'm currently a second year resident here in the United States. And today we will be exploring what is family medicine and everything that it entails from work-life balance to the structure of the whole family medicine residency program to salaries and what the future entails in terms of career advancement and fellowship opportunities. I'm here with a very special guest, Ms. Arthi Patel. Nice to meet you. My name is Arthi Patel, and I actually just recently matched at Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio this past match year. So I'm currently an intern. So it's kind of been a roller coaster since July 1st. Yeah, I know like the transition of going from a medical student to being a doctor and that is the internship is the harshest uh, time of a doctor. Like when I was an intern, I was like, oh, how does this EMR work? The the system in the US was so foreign to me. Oh my God, it it was a very harsh time for me. Yeah. So yeah, internship is hard. So Tell me about family medicine and what it entails. What's what's family medicine? Yeah, absolutely. So I know it's a little hard for people to grasp the the concept when they're not from the US or North America because it doesn't exist in a lot of other countries. But family medicine, I guess, if you're from a different country, like, for example, in India, they might call it general medicine. Mm -hmm. Or they might think that you're the type of doctor that visits their house in India and then treats the patients. So it's very broad. You get to do a little bit of everything. We have women's health. We take a look at pediatric patients. We take a look at adults, but we can also see geriatric patient populations. We can do a little bit of procedures if we're interested in it or choose not to do any procedures at all. So it's very diverse and it's supposed to be broad in the sense that when you go to see your regular doctor, they can help you with 99% of the things that you're coming in with or 99% of the concerns that you have. And the whole point of family medicine is to be able to not only be there for you medically and treat you clinically, but also be like a form of support when it comes to your mental health or even emotionally as well. Wow. So it's it's pretty much like very diverse in the fact that you're like addressing a broad age group, right? Like from kids to the geriatric population. And in the same time, it's very holistic in the fact that not only are you addressing this 99% of their problems, you're also being there for them, like like you just said, right? So I think that's what makes family medicine a bit different from internal medicine, just, just the broad age group and the holisticity, right? And why family medicine for you? Like, why not internal medicine? Just, just um, yeah. So I think for like the longest time up until a couple of years ago, I wanted to do pediatrics. So just being like really focused on working with kids, mm-hmm. I realized that I did not want to give up adult medicine after learning it for so many years. And I did enjoy that aspect, but I also did not want to give up my pediatric patient population. So family medicine for me was kind of combining internal medicine and pediatrics together. Yeah, I think that's a nice way to put it, like internal medicine plus pediatrics, because yeah, internal medicine could theoretically take care of the geriatric population, but definitely not the pediatric population. So w- what's the structure like for family medicine training, at least in your university? Like what's PGY1 like, PGY2 like, PGY3 like, and what's the total duration? Is it the constant within all universities? So PGY1 intern year so far, I am, I guess, almost three months in has been Definitely a roller coaster. Our first year is very similar to third year of medical school. So you have to go through blocks that are for surgery for a majority of programs. And that's what mine does. We have ob we have pediatrics, we do ambulatory, which is working in the clinic outpatient. We have our own family med inpatient service as well that we rotate through. Mm-hmm. We go through ED adult and then also ED for pediatrics. So it's a lot of like repetition of what you went through during your med school rotations. Mm-hmm. And intern year is kind of like repeating that entire like last two years of medical school. But the only difference is now you're actually in charge and need to know what you're doing as well. So it's been a little tough, but it hasn't been terrible. And then starting second year. Yeah. We do get one block of electives, so we get to choose what we want to do for that block. 
And then other than that, we do have some other blocks that are required, such as psychiatry, we have dermatology, and then we do the repeats for the ones that are highly required. So we have our outpatient clinic settings and then our inpatient settings as well. And third year I've heard is the easiest, but also somewhat tough considering that you are now like officially the team leader. So for inpatient, even though you're not seeing one or two patients that you need to know really well, you are in charge of knowing all the patients on your list and kind of knowing what's going on with them and having like backup plans to help your intern out, putting mm-hmm. in orders when you're on rounds. And we do get three blocks of electives for third year as well. Wow, that's um, awesome. So what percentage of the family medicine residency is inpatient? versus Mm -hmm. what percentage is outpatient and how do you guys switch i know like some programs have like two weeks of inpatient medicine and then one week they go to outpatient before they are inpatient again how does that work for you guys yes so i can't exactly remember for second and third year if the ratio changes but currently for intern year we have three blocks of inpatient medicine and then we get one block for outpatient clinic but in addition to that as an intern Every block that you're on, regardless, you do have at least one half day minimum in the clinic. Every day? Every week, you'll get one half day. So, every, like, every week. yes. So, currently, I'm on PEDS inpatient, and every Friday afternoon, I will leave the hospital and I will go to clinic to see my patients. So, <laughs> my program has kind of incorporated being able to get like that continuity with your patients all year long instead of just like not having you do outpatient at all until it's your block. So it just kind of helps us like stay connected to that side of family med. Definitely. All right. So you're getting the flavor of outpatient within the inpatient block as well. Uh, So it looks like it's more 75% inpatient and more 25% outpatient with the mixture of like uh, that outpatient half day in the week of inpatient, Mm -hmm. right? That's how it looks like. So how is like the work-life balance, right? How many days do you work in a week? And this varies, I know, with the inpatient block and the outpatient block, but could you you clarify like how does the work-life balance look like? Yes. So it definitely does vary depending on what rotation you're on. For some of our blocks, they are on the easier side. So I actually started in the ED in July, and then I had my surgery block for block two last month. Mm -hmm. And for both of them, I worked Monday through Friday, and I actually had my weekends off which was really nice, you know, especially in July when I was like completely fresh and didn't know what to do, didn't know what was expected of me. It was nice to have those two days to myself. But then for rotations like inpatient, whether that's for family med or for pediatrics, we only get one day off a week. So it is a little tougher to kind of like focus on you and focus on your mental health when you only get one day off. And it's like, okay, do I want to like go out and do something with my friends? Or do I want to like sit on the couch and just relax before I have to wake up early the next morning? But overall, if we're talking about like work life balance outside of residency, that was one of the other deciding factors for me choosing the specialty. Because I feel like you can really make your schedule based on how you want to live your life. So for me, I'm really someone that absolutely loves my weekends. And I'm also someone that would push through and work like 10 hours a day and only work for four days a week and have a three day weekend every week. And family medicine does give you the opportunity to do that as long as you're still making sure that you're seeing your patients. Okay, that's awesome. So that's as as a resident, that's how it works. And during residency, how's compensation like for you? And uh, do you get any kind of benefits in terms of like any academic funds? Does your program pay for any kind of books or, you know, other services like going to conferences? Yes. So compensation wise, I'm actually very grateful because my program does have a salary that's on the higher end for residencies. For intern year, we get paid a little over 71000 for the first year, which is, yeah, it was... I, I make less. Like, I make less. <laughs> I thought it was a glitch like on their website when I first took a look at it. And I'm like, this can't be right. But 
that is their salary. And I think it really helped me kind of figure out like, okay, like, do I really like this program? You know, like, because you also don't want to like choose a program just based on salary. But it was definitely a very high selling point when you are a student who has not been making an income. But Mm -hmm. compensation is absolutely amazing at my program, which I love. But we do get funding for educational resources, like if we want to buy UWorld to study for step three, or if we want to buy any books to help us study. And then we do get to go to conferences as well. And they those are paid for. And the good thing about that is that our like vacation days or sick days are not deducted by going to conferences. Okay, that, that's good. So going into like vocation days and, and tying it to work life balance, like how, how many vocation days do you get like or and sick days in total? So we get three weeks of vacation. So seven days total. So like 21. And then we get five sick days. Okay, so 26 days in total. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, that's a good like amount of days. I get like 15. It's <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. And how how is the attending lifestyle like, you know, and, and what's the compensation that attendings can expect? And I know that varies, but on an average, if somebody is working in the hospital or as a PCP or uh, let's say private clinic, you know, in these three sections, like how much can uh, one expect? Yes, absolutely. So the overall range for family medicine, I feel like the range is very like wide, but I would say as a family med doc, you can make anywhere from like 200,000 to 300,000. And if you are doing inpatient medicine as an attending in the future, I think you do end up making a little bit more because a lot of times you're working with university programs and you're in teaching programs and you do get that additional income Mm -hmm. from that perspective. Or if you're working with medical students, you kind of get a portion from that as well. But I would say anywhere from 200 to 300 overall. Okay. So what's the career opportunities that you get after like family medicine's done? And what I specifically mean is like fellowship opportunities. What kind of fellowships do you guys have? So I think the biggest ones that people think of are like sports medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have addiction medicine as well. You can do adolescent medicine to work with kids specifically. We have women's health for residents who are interested in doing a little bit more like OB-GYN related um, procedures in their clinics for their patients. You can also do like a dermatology fellowship if that's something you're absolutely interested in. So I would say that they are more limited compared to IM because for IM you have like cardio, palm, like you do have the ICU, you have hematology, oncology. So you can't do all of those fellowships with family medicine. But then I feel like you get more of like the routine fellowships that connect with family medicine a little bit more. So what's your advice to a medical student or a graduate who's watching this and is considering family medicine? I think the number one advice I would give is don't confuse family medicine with internal medicine. A lot of people think it's exactly the same, but since you hear internal medicine so much, especially as IMGs, it's like you automatically opt for that, thinking that they're both the same, when in reality, I feel like they're a little different depending on how you want to work in the future. And the other thing, just for students that are applying, you cannot use the same letters for family med and for IM that that's good advice because i think that i get that question all the time can i use my internal medicine letter for a family medicine residency so so it won't work i thought like there was a big overlap and that would be fine so it's so, not- i think it's okay like if you did an im rotation or like clinical experience with im and they're stating in their letter that you're highly interested in like primary care and want to do family medicine But I think if the IM letter is stating that you're interested in IM and you're sending it off to family med, that's definitely not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And I also think like if you have three IM letters, but you don't have a single FM letter, like it might make programs think, why did you not try finding a family med rotation if you absolutely love it and want to be a part of it? 
and they would be like you might be using them as a backup nobody likes backups yes and unfortunately right. i think family medicine is definitely one of the easier specialties to get into and a lot of people think that they can use it as a backup but programs have caught on and they know how to figure out if you're using it as a backup or not just based on your experiences how you wrote your application what your personal statement sounds like so i feel like if you are dual applying to any two specialties like you really have to focus on how you're wording your entire application yeah i completely agree like for me i, I would just say that if you're applying go all in on one specialty and you shall match and prevail right versus dual applying which can be just so risky uh, many people think that it's hard for programs to tell but like based upon like you said the era cv and the letters that you have many of them just can catch on like that right like for for me it was all psychiatry like when i was applying everything just screamed psychiatry and i think that gave me a big advantage i think like when you're dual applying like i always wondered is it like difficult to conduct your interviews because your brain is constantly switching between the two like for me for interview season after like the first couple i feel like my mind was just like on one track and it's like i knew what questions to expect i knew how to answer them right because it was just all family med related yeah that's hard to do just faking interest <laughs> into specialities right that that's that's kind of hard to do right i couldn't so so that's my advice is if you're applying choose one specialty and go all in it doesn't help to dual apply it would just like you know it's like stepping into two boats at once and then not being able to sail right exactly. at all so yeah 100% all right guys you know if you like this video please press the like button and subscribe thank thank you for watching <laughs>